Good afternoon, everybody. Um, a very warm welcome to the first episode of Stuart's Soundbites. This is a series of 15 minute webinars where we're looking at um, life beyond serious injury. We're on a tight schedule today because every episode, as I have mentioned, is only 15 minutes. So we're going to fly through. Um, so I'm not going to hog the stage anymore. I'm just going to introduce you to Matt Booth, who is the founder and director of Flex Health. Um, Flex Health are a leading provider of specialist musculoskeletal and neurological physiotherapy. So over to you, Matt. Thanks, Emma. Um, hi, guys. Thank you for, uh, for tuning in. Um, so I'm just going to move across to my presentation now, um, which I'll just share my screen. Yeah, so um, as Emma said, um, I'm the founder and um, director here at Flex Health. So we're based in Hull um, in East Yorkshire. Um, we do sort of see clients that range all the way through Yorkshire, but we specialize in musculoskeletal and neurological conditions. So um, Emma's kindly asked me to speak on um, the, the title, Virtu The Virtues of Virtual Therapy and does virtual therapy have a place sort of after, after lockdown? So um, I'm going to give a, a brief overview of, of what we do in clinic and how we treat our patients and then sort of move on to discuss um, how I found virtual therapy, how one of my patients has found virtual therapy and sort of the positives of what we can take from using virtual platforms moving forward. Um, so this is just one of our patients that we've been treating at the minute. Um, so I'm going to speak on him a little bit later. Um, but everything at Flex Health we do is all, all centered around the patient. We, we try to have a, a very community feel within, within, the, within the clinic itself. Um, so um, as I said before, we treat both musculoskeletal and neurological um, conditions. Um, we always use a patient-centered approach. Um, we personalize each individual case and we work with all our patients to manage their symptoms and aid recovery. We, you know, at their absolute utmost, we, we put the client's goals first and we always strive to ensure that um, our physiotherapy practice is centered around the client and we always try and engage with them on a one-to-one -one basis, um, offering them the support and care that they, they deserve. Um, as you can see here in the picture, we've, we've uh, invested quite a bit of our, our resources into sort of top equipment so we have here a functional electrical stimulation cycle so this uses electrical input into the you know said muscle groups um, which use and then you can cycle along with that that activity um, to promote muscle strength and endurance and we've also got a few other bits of very specialist and bespoke equipment um, to aid a patient's recovery um, we do believe in a hands-on approach um, so we do like to you know um, use passive treatment as well as active treatment. We will always try and be as active as possible. Um, but we do believe in that very, you know, um, intensive physiotherapy approach to try and get the patient back to a functional goal as quickly as possible. Um, so we have experience treating the following neurological conditions. Um, so MS, Parkinson's, Gillian Barr, um, traumatic and acquired brain injury, um, spinal injuries, trauma, and much more. Um, we, you know, as time's gone on, we, we do have a, tra a proven track record with providing, you know, um, an unbeatable rehabilitation service. And, you know, that's always designed around the patient. You know, we, we, we as I can't stress enough how much we put, put the patient first. And, you know, we do, you know, as today is seen, we do work with a wider MDT of professionals as well, which is always fantastic. So the clinic itself, um, like I said, we have, you know, bespoke bits of equipment. So we've got an anti-gravity treadmill. Um, these functional electrical stimulation bikes, a fully ho hoisted rehabilitation trainer um, and a disabled rehabilitation gym. Um, and then we have dedicated physiotherapy treatment rooms as well within that. So that's just an overview of what we do here at Flex Health. Um, so just a few of our patients who have very kindly um, said that we can use their success stories. So moving from left to right, um, we have um, a person here who had cord requiner, um, they have a very demanding job that, you know, they spend a lot of their time on their feet. Um, so we use the anti-gravity treadmill um, to work on endurance um, and he's now back at work, which is fantastic. Um, he's been working over the past year um, and he's had a really great story. And um, probably one of our more high profile cases is uh, Mossy um, from Hull KR who had a spinal injury earlier this year. 
and we're really sort of hoping that the next few months that we'll get him running, uh, which will be pretty exciting. And um, so we're just working on that, those those goals at the minute. Um, another patient here who, um, again, his aim for Christmas is to be off his sticks completely. Um, and he took his first independent steps across Scarborough Beach um, back just before lockdown, which again was a pretty special, a pretty, pretty special occasion. And then lastly is one of our longest standing patients um, and, you know, all around wonderful lady. And it just stresses the importance that we have here of, you know, that community feel. Um, and we'll stress that this picture was taken um, pre-lockdown um, for just, just to clarify on that one. Um, so, yeah, so just coming on to today's topic then. So, um, so I was asked by Emma just to talk about um, virtual therapy and how I've coped, um, how my patients have coped, and from an MBT point of view as well. So I thought what, what would have been quite a nice exercise um, was I asked one of my patients if he wouldn't mind doing an, an anonymous um, sort of Q&A about his um, experience of lockdown and virtual therapy. So I just asked him just three questions. Um, how did he find lockdown? Um, he, you know, he did stress that he felt that he did go backwards um, in his progression um, with his recovery. Um, sorry, just to, just to confirm, his patient suffered a traumatic brain injury as well. Um, however, he did sort of um, highlight that he did really enjoy um, the virtual physiotherapy sessions that we did together. Um, and that he did feel that he would have declined even further without those. Um, you know, in terms of his general well-being, I asked him about, you know, he did really miss his family and friends um, and he did find lockdown quite boring. Um, so, you know, I, I ensured that we had that open dialogue throughout the entire time um, and that, you know, we were engaging continuously through lockdown um, but virtually and, you know, it gave him some structure to his week, which was fantastic. And, no, and then I just went on to ask him how did lockdown affect his condition um, and he said it really did affect his condition. He found he put on weight, um, you know, which is something that we've been working with him. Um, and, it, you know, I think one of the biggest things for him is this patient particularly likes routine um, and that, you know, his general well-being did decline. Um, and I think that was sort of built out of frustration more than anything at the situation that, you know, he, he, he did you know, unfortunately did feel isolated at times. Um, you know, and then I just asked him, did he enjoy the virtual physiotherapy sessions? And he said, yes, he did. Um, he liked the routine of the sessions and keeping the structure of the sessions helped with his state of mind. He did prefer the face-to-face -face sort of physiotherapy sessions and the rapport that me and him do have. Um, but, you know, the one thing that did, has come out of this is that he now knows that if he can't get into clinic for a session, that he now knows he can complete his rehab from a distance, which is fantastic. And, you know, I think it did develop our rapport even further, which again was absolutely brilliant. Um, so then I just sort of want to talk about, you know, do I think that virtual therapy has um, a position long term moving out of lockdown? Um, and I just pulled this um, and I paraphrased it a little bit, just this, this block of text and, you know, and it's no two brain injuries are the same. Um, therefore, the appropriate re approach for rehabilitation for brain injuries is to treat all patients differently and independently. Um, you know, and we do have to factor in as clinicians and, you know, case managers, um, you know, patients will have altered motor and muscle function, balance and coordination deficits. Um, and, you know, all these need to be factored alongside their functional goals. And, you know, of course, agreed between, you know, the therapist, clinician and the patient. But what I wanted to do was pull out the positives of what I feel um, that virtual therapy ha will have for the patient long term. And the accessibility is, you know, paramount here is that, you know, we can access that, the patient anytime, anywhere, which is superb. And that it does remove those barriers, those traditional barriers that we have had, you know, particularly with initial needs assessments. You know, we now can get a significant amount of subjective um, information from that patient um, very quickly and very, very easily. And one thing that we see on a daily basis is, you know, when a new patient is coming into clinic, it is a very stressful situation for them. You know, they're out of their comfort zone. They may have experienced a significant life changing um, event. Um, so, you know, maybe being able to use a virtual platform 
to discuss um, you know, and, and engage with that patient first and foremost to build that rapport um, might just reduce some stress for them, which is exactly what we're here for. Um, and client comfort, you know, if a client you know, does want to stay at home and do it from a distance, then I think that's something that we should definitely be encouraging. And I certainly will be going forwards. And I just lastly want to talk about, you know, one, the, the, arguably the biggest thing that I feel has, has happened um, for virtual um, therapy within this sector, and that is MDT working. I think this has had a significantly positive impact on MDT working. Um, and I just, I've just used this, um, this study from Ardham in 2019 that looked into virtual platforms for MDT and he really stressed the positivity around um, virtual platforms and you know, he said that you know, evidence has shown that using a virtual platform improved productivity, report writing, improved access to medical services and settings, reduced time for assessing, diagnosing and treating the patient. And, you know, one thing that I definitely felt um, that I can relate to my practice is that improved flexibility. You know, I've, uh, you know, with Emma, for example, I've, I've developed a much better rapport with her from, a, you know, using virtual platforms, which has been fantastic. I've been able to develop existing relationships with people and develop new um, exciting um, opportunities with, with new MDT members, which is great. I think that's all down to those traditional barriers again, you know, in terms of travel time costs, um, you know, and we can start to establish a really competent network around us. So just lastly, I just wanted to talk about my experiences of um, lockdown and virtual MDT working. So it's definitely increased and improved um, the discussions I've had with new MDT members. Um, in fact, I believe within this period, I've probably developed about an, an, a new 50% of, of colleagues and a wider MDT um, within lockdown. And that's all down to virtual based meetings, which has been fantastic. And I've established a wider network of clinicians and professionals, you know, that I can call upon, you know, very quickly, very easily. You know, I don't have to factor in travel time anymore. If I need to ask a professional opinion of somebody else, it's very quick for me to open my laptop, have a, a very, very formal or informal discussion with them about, you know, a situation and then be able to apply that to my clinical practice, which has been great. And, you know, before lockdown, that may have taken an afternoon or two, three hours out of my diary, which has been br absolutely brilliant. Um, An improved communication, I feel that, you know, the communication I've had with, you know, um, case managers and other um, occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, um, psychologists, the, the improved communication has been fantastic. And that open dialogue has, has definitely improved, which is great. And, you know, overall, that has improved my time management um, and being able to dedicate more time to the client, which I think is, again, paramount and what, we, you know, if we can reduce the amount of stress um, for the patient um, with improved communication. I think that's definitely something that, you know, we all we, we can all be uh, aiming towards. Um, so, yeah, it's a, a very quick presentation on, on my experience of um, a, a virtual virtual um, therapy and working um, so I just want to say thank you to to Emma for allowing me to have the first session of the uh, sound bites uh, today I hope you've all enjoyed my presentation um, I'm just going to hand back to Emma now um, just to uh, just to conclude um, but thank you very much for listening I really do appreciate it Oh, thank, thank you, Matt. That was, it was really interesting. It's great to see some of your real life case studies as well. Um, cause I think that kind of makes everything a bit more real, um, for people. And I mean, we're all getting to grips with the technology now. So it's really positive to hear some of those, you know, really good things that have come out of, of working virtually, um, and, and thinking about it from a different perspective. So thank you. Really appreciate it. No um, we've, uh, managed to just about stay within our allocated 15 minutes so I'm not going to keep anybody in drone on but I just wanted to um, thank all of you for um, attending and just mention next week next Wednesday one o'clock uh, we've got another um, webinar we've got Jared McDermott QC he's going to be talking um, about expert evidence and uh, giving um, out some of his 
pearls of wisdom and top tips uh, for experts in report preparation. Um, so that'll be Brill. And for all of the case managers that are with us, I just wanted to mention the case management specific seminar that we have on the 16th of September, 11 o'clock. Um, and that's um, a, a webinar that's going to be dedicated to exploring the impact of COVID upon litigation um, and looking at expert and uh, case manager assessments. And I think if the content um, doesn't already win you for which it should, because it'll be brilliant, there's also a magnum of champagne up for grabs, I believe. So uh, there's more than one reason to tune in. Um, yeah, and I, I should say that we don't have time for Q and A's in this short session because we promised something short and sharp. But if you do have any questions um, or you'd like to ask Matt any questions um, please just drop me or Matt a line and we'll, we'll come back to you. All right thanks everybody have a good day. Cheers. Bye. Bye.